Theo Vaughn has completely taken over the world of comedy. His outlandish comments and insane stories have captivated millions of people, which in turn has made him one of the most well-known comedians of his generation. Throughout his career, he went from being a no-name comic, doing various shows so he could scrape by, to becoming one of the most sought-after comedians in the industry, gaining millions of followers, selling out every show, and making appearances on seemingly every major podcast. As great as things may seem though, Theo actually has a much darker past than most would assume. And although he's gained millions of fans throughout the years, few people truly know his story. How exactly did Theo Vaughn blow up so suddenly? What makes him different from every other comedian? And perhaps most importantly, does he even deserve the attention that he's getting? The saying, hide behind the tears of a clown, is often used to describe someone masking their inner pain with humor. This is a concept that's well known among comedians. When kids grow up with trauma, they often learn to laugh about things as a way to cope, which is why most major comedians have always had some sort of troubled past. They either had a rough childhood, various substance abuse problems, mental health issues, or some combination of things. As funny as he is, Theo Vaughn is no different. Although there isn't a ton of public information about Theo's childhood other than what he's joked about on podcasts or in his stand-up, there are bits of information he's shared in a more serious context, which gives insight into his troubled past and explains much more of his personality. Theo was originally born Theodore Capitani von Kurnatowski on March 19, 1980 in Covington, Louisiana, or what he refers to as the stray animal belt. To this day, there is a lot of poverty in rural Southern America, and things were even worse back in the 80s and 90s. In Covington specifically, over 30% of the population was below the poverty line in certain years. This tough upbringing shaped a lot of Theo's character, which would, later on, contribute to the formation of much of his material. See, when you grow up in a poor neighborhood, the surrounding community isn't very forgiving. People don't care if you're going through hard times, because in those places, everyone is going through hard times. Growing up, Theo often got made fun of by other kids in his town. This is something he's talked about at length. Yeah. But anyway, number 19, yeah, yeah. bro, would get onto my bicycle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he would see me coming, he would say, here comes the, in, he would say the N-word bus. He would say, here comes the N-word bus. <laughs> oh, really? And as many black kids <laughs> as they wanted to would get onto my bike and make me bike them to school, like the little engine that could. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Sure, he can joke about it now, but back then, it definitely wasn't easy to go through. He would try everything he could to avoid getting picked on, even riding his bike five miles to school every day so other kids didn't see where he lived. Even with these efforts, it was tough to avoid the realities of growing up in a poor community. And to make matters worse, his rather unorthodox family life at home simply added fuel to the fire. As crazy as it may sound, Theo's father was a Nicaraguan immigrant who had Theo when he was almost 70, despite his mother only being 32. To put that into perspective, his dad was born in 1910, which was before the widespread use of cars, before the mass adoption of electricity, and before the start of World War I. This created a difficult dynamic both inside and outside of his house. With his dad being so old, it made Theo reluctant to form a strong relationship with him, since, as morbid as it sounds, he knew he wouldn't be around for long. At a more practical level, it was also tough physically, because when your dad is in his 70s, it's not like you can go play catch together in the front yard. On top of this, kids would often make fun of him for having such an old dad, and as a way to cope with it, Theo would sometimes make jokes about his dad being old himself which only caused more strain on their relationship. Whether he realized it or not, he began building a resentment towards his dad, and perhaps even some of the people in his neighborhood. He does still joke about it occasionally, but talking about his father is one of the few moments people have ever seen Theo be more serious. Theo would eventually emancipate himself when he was just 14 because of problems with his parents, and his father would pass away soon after when he was only 16. Even after he left his parents' house though, he was still left to deal with the harsh reality of growing up in a poor community. You know, I had to, I think I had a little bit of that poor white anger. You know, nobody gives a f about poor white people in America, it seems like. You know, I grew up around some f***ing real crazy poor white people. They had a dude in our town, no arms, used to f***ing fight everybody. He had no arms. No arms at all, and he'd fight anybody, dude. This whole family, the whole family was f***ing... He could choke you out. Psychos, bro. Brother I had sharpened half of his teeth on one side of his mouth, dude. These people would f*** you up. One of the kids was in a wheelchair, just, they never taught him to walk, I think. I don't even think he was crippled, they just never taught him to walk. And they used to put a board over the sink at night and one of them would sleep over the sinks. They had 11 children. But yeah, it's like I grew up in, in that type of environment where it's just like, I don't know, you don't feel like anybody gives a f about you. So I think a lot, of, it took a long time for that, some of that to get out of my system. I still feel it when I go around like really rich people who think that they know everything. 
Man, that stuff makes me mad, dude. dude. Many of his friends and family members had substance abuse problems, and several of them either went to jail or even died at a very young age. Seeing these situations firsthand was all the motivation Theo needed. Looking to escape a similar outcome as people around him, Theo decided to go to college, which unknowingly to him would lead him down a career that would take him far beyond what he could ever have imagined. In the early and mid 2000s, reality shows dominated TV. Almost every major network had at least one version of a reality show, with some networks dedicating their entire channel to it. Luckily for Theo Vaughn, he happened to end up on one of them. When Theo was just 19, he was recruited to MTV's Road Rules while studying at Louisiana State University in 2000. This would kick off a multi-year career in reality TV where he would be featured on four seasons of MTV's reality game show The Challenge, finishing as the runner-up on his second season and the winner of his last two seasons. Having the foresight to know reality TV wasn't a long-lasting career, throughout these years, Theo was simultaneously working on a career in stand-up out in LA. Got a pretty crazy life, man. My father was 70 years old when I was born. 7-0. Gets better. My mother was 32. Here. Yeah. Uh, basically make me a product of loose skin and loose morals, if you look at it like that. Was it a very lucrative career at the time? No, not at all. But unlike reality TV, comedy was something he genuinely enjoyed and was passionate about and he had aspirations for making it his full-time career. Unfortunately, thanks to his background in reality shows, it was difficult for him to gain much traction. Booking agents simply saw him as a reality TV star, so it would take him years to shake that image and truly establish himself as a real comic. With enough effort though, he did manage to achieve milestones that would slowly change the narrative. In 2006, Theo competed and won season 4 of the online comedy competition Last Comic Standing. In 2008, he won the Comedy Central sketch or competition show Reality Bites Back, beating out fellow comedians including Amy Schumer, Bert Kreischer, and Tiffany Haddish. In 2011, he took over as host of the Yahoo Online TV recap show Primetime and No Time, before hosting three seasons of a hidden camera show called Deal With It from 2013 to 2014. The multi-year stretch of pushing out reality TV and into traditional media was finally giving his entertainment career some legs. Alongside all of these milestones, he was also doing stand-up, touring the country and working on honing his craft. Since most of his career was made up of an assortment of random appearances, he was far from a household name. But he was building a solid foundation. A foundation that would soon help catapult him into becoming one of the biggest comedians in the world. While Theo was still developing his stand-up career, he was smart enough to utilize the internet as he did it. He would enter online comedy competitions, he would popularize crank texting and make blogs about it, and he would always look for opportunities to expand his career. This might seem like common sense now, but in the early stages of the internet, a lot of people were too lazy to figure out how to utilize it, or were simply against it altogether, opting to do things the old-fashioned way instead. Well, perhaps it was just fortunate timing, but one of the avenues Theo decided to pursue was this new thing called podcasting. The idea of friends sitting down and recording a several hour long conversation together was still fairly new, but that didn't stop Theo from trying it out in several different formats. His first podcast was the Comedy Sideshow in 2011, a podcast that ran for 23 episodes where Theo would interview comedians or entertainers at the Improv Comedy Club in Hollywood. It wasn't crazy successful, but it was fairly decent, and it definitely helped with his networking in the comedy world. Then in 2015, he started a weekly podcast with filmmaker journalist Matthew Cole Weiss called Allegedly with Theo Vaughn and Matthew Cole Weiss. On the podcast, the two completely opposite friends would compete to see who had better alleged stories from their years living in Hollywood. The podcast never really blew up and eventually ended after 3 years and 123 episodes. But during that time, Theo really began to develop his banter and started gaining recognition for some of his crazy stories. And I used to work for this group. They used to sell tattooed hamsters and guinea pigs after, uh... They tattoo them? Yeah, they used to brand them with concerts and raves. They would say it's tattooed just to make people not be as sad about it. But it was a brand, bro. A brand, bro. <laughs> of what? Uh, 311, Green Day, anything like of different bands that were coming to town. <laughs> Toadies. <laughs> That's Swear to God, up. bro. Toadies, Acid Bath, uh, who else? Noticing some of the positive reception, he finally started his own podcast called This Past Weekend in 2016, which he still does to this day. Unlike the other shows, he would mostly do this podcast solo, 
sharing stories with his listeners, and taking calls and questions from Patreon members. It was a pretty informal thing, and although some of the episodes would do alright, his overall viewership was still relatively low. Then in 2017, a single guest appearance on someone else's podcast would change his career forever. After appearing on the Joe Rogan podcast for the first time, Theo's character was finally projected to the world on a large platform. Two Thanksgivings ago, we had two owls at my sister's house. Yeah, I saw one last night, actually. Did you? Yeah, it was big, too. It's gross, I think. Owls? The meat, the... F uh, oh, you ate them, you're saying? Yeah, but the... You guys ate owls? Yeah. I don't I think that's legal. You probably shouldn't say that on the podcast. Well, <laughs> I didn't have a lot. Sure, he had some decent appearances in front of large audiences before that, but mostly in a scripted or highly produced setting. Seeing Theo Vaughn in an unregulated environment was a completely different thing, and the audience loved it. His ability to keep a straight face after saying the most bizarre things is unparalleled. I swear, I feel like Theo never starts a sentence knowing what he's about to say. The way he words stuff is so hilarious. Even if the joke isn't that great, his wordplay makes it gold. Theo is such a likable dude. Seems like a very down-to-earth or humble guy. I can't help but root for him. The way he would respond to questions, the outlander stories he would tell, and the general demeanor was something completely new in the world of comedy. When Theo was talking, you honestly had no idea what he was going to say next. Bees are dying from the heat. Is it the heat? Yep, they're evaporating, they ejaculate, and their whole body blows up. Is that real? Bring it up, Jamie. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking do I, something in here today. I, I, okay. Bees ejaculating themselves to death in heat waves. Yeah, baby. Oh my spring God, you're break, telling baby. The truth. I thought <laughs> you were just making break. it up. So Click on that. <laughs> Hell no, dude. This is in uh, I'm sure. <laughs> this is in uh, Panama City Beach, Florida. Bees. Yeah. Bees. Click on that link. He would tell these hilarious stories that were so bizarre that they were hard to even believe. But he would tell them in a totally casual way with a completely straight face. People watching couldn't help but wonder, were the wild things he was saying actually true? And better yet, does he even know just how crazy his stories sound to other people? This single podcast appearance launched his career to an entirely different level. And since he had already been grinding for years, he was fully ready to capitalize on the opportunity. He soon started touring more often in much larger venues and began making appearances on most major podcasts out there. Just sitting down to have a conversation with him naturally produces comedy gold. So there's no shortage of shows looking to have him on, which only builds his personal fan base even more. Between his sold out live shows and his solo podcast bringing in over 10 million views per month, Theo Vaughn is likely making several million dollars per year. And things don't show any signs of slowing down, especially with this rapidly growing fan base. To many casual observers, it seemed like Theo Vaughn came out of nowhere and blew up in just a few years. But in reality, he had been hustling for decades. Now, as he's gained more and more recognition, it's not like he's only gotten positive feedback. In fact, as his career has grown, there's also been a growing number of people who actually dislike his comedy and have no problem expressing that. All my friends think him crazy, but he is not funny at all to me. He just seems like someone who makes things up for laughs and tries way too hard. I get that's what comedy is to some people, but I have not laughed one time watching him. Theo Vaughn seems to be all over my For You page on TikTok. People are posting clips of his spids or pods to their stories, sending me his videos too. I don't get it. He's not funny at all, and he seems dumb as a bag of rocks with some of the crap he comes up with. I'm sure he's not actually dumb, I just don't get how he has such a large fan base. The thing is, comedy is subjective, and everyone isn't going to like everything. Are Theo's stories actually true? A lot of times they probably are, and sometimes they probably aren't. But that's the beauty of his comedic style. When he tells these insane stories with a straight face, it makes it that much funnier that his life has been so odd that you can't even tell if what's being said really happened or not. One comment sums this up perfectly saying, I swear every story could be 100% true or 100% a joke and there is no way at all to even tell. He has to be one of the funniest people in years. Some people might think he's just a dumb redneck from the south, but if you actually pay attention to the things he says and the way he says them, it's clear that he's an incredibly intelligent person who's battled a lot of demons and has managed to help a lot of people along the way. Even with the few negative comments you see, it's safe to say that Theo Vaughn has established one of the largest fan bases in comedy, and there's a reason for that. He's been able to naturally carve out his own style and turn what was likely a very tough upbringing into funny stories that viewers can connect to. The nonchalant way he talks about things, the quick responses he's been able to think of, and the outlandish things he says form a perfect blend that people love. Although he's still somewhat early on in his career, 
Theo Vaughn is widely considered to be one of the funniest people of his generation, and it's highly unlikely that anyone will come along that can even remotely match the style that he's created.